Hey guys, Maven here, and from 2001 through 2005, I had the great job of being a WWE superstar. Now, when you get to this world, there's a lot of unwritten rules that, to be honest, you just don't know about. You don't know they exist. You quickly learn about them, and actually, one of these rules I didn't follow led to me being fired. Had I had known about it, who knows, I might still be in the WWE. But for right now, let's go over some of the unwritten rules of the WWE. Unwritten rule number one, shake everyone's hand. Now this might sound ridiculous, but let's break it down a little bit. As soon as you arrive to a show, and we might do three or four shows per week, I'm talking every show, but as soon as you arrive to the building, you're gonna walk in and you're gonna see wrestlers, producers, you're gonna see maybe someone's wife, you're gonna shake each and every one of their hands. Now this usually happens in either the locker room or in catering, but every show, as soon as you see someone for the first time that day, extend your hand and shake it. Because if you don't, you're gonna find trouble. I even witnessed it backstage, one of the uh, top guys, and I'll leave his name out, but he refused to shake some of the veterans' hands, and this ultimately led to them getting into a real altercation backstage. So, rule number one, very simple, shake everyone's hand. Unwritten rule number two, simple, be on time. When you're doing a live show and when you're wrestling for the WWE, things have to work like clockwork. If you're not on time, the show might not run exactly the way Vince and all the other producers see fit. You don't wanna be that person that's holding the show up. You don't wanna be that person that is considered unreliable. So very simple. If your call time is one o'clock, be there at one o'clock. Heck, be there at 12.30. Now I learned the hard way about being on time. I would ride with Randy Orton and let's just say Randy and I, we were on uh, opposite ends of the importance spectrum. But our call time for Raw was always 1 p.m. Orton, he could manipulate those numbers a little bit easier than I could. And I remember one show in particular, we got there around three o'clock. We both walked in at the exact same time. Did Randy get in trouble? He didn't. Did I? Oh yes, I did. <laughs> and being on time was something that was stressed to me, just the importance of it. Now we went live at nine o'clock for Monday Night Raw. I was there six hours early and still considered late. But guess what? I wasn't late anymore after that. Unwritten rule number three, it's a simple one, it's an easy one, but so tempting to break. Stay to the end of the show. A lot of times when we get done with a show, we have a hundred, maybe 200 mile drive ahead of us. And it's so tempting to want to get a jump start on that travel. But stay to the end of the show and watch everyone's match. A lot of the veterans, heck, they might be having a match that you need to see, not want to see, but need to see. Why? Because it's gonna make you better in the long run, might give you ideas. So show them the respect that they deserve. If you don't, if you duck out, they're gonna think that you have better things to do than get better. So. Unwritten rule number three, stay to the end of the show and watch all the matches. Unwritten rule number four, very simple. It has to do with money. And that is don't ask, don't tell. Money is the one thing on this planet that can divide almost anybody. It's not your business about how much someone else makes and vice versa. It's not their business how much you make. So the best rule of thumb, never ask and obviously don't indulge about how much you made per show. Unwritten rule number five, plans are going to change. Be able to roll with them. When I was wrestling Shelton Benjamin for the Intercontinental Championship, the original plan was to maybe give me the belt, but being that I had just turned to a bad guy and I was still extremely inexperienced, they knew I wasn't ready. Now, I had one or two options there. I could have hung my head and showed them that I would never be ready, but what I did was agree with them and say that, let me get more experience so that when you are ready, I am ready. Realize, this is live television, so plans are gonna change at any time. 
be able to roll with it. Unwritten rule number six, respect your agent. In my time, they were former wrestlers who have had their own success, and these are the men and women that help put your matches together. A lot of times they're gonna tell you or maybe give you ideas that you might not like, and it's so tempting to wanna circumvent that and get the result that you're looking for, don't do this. Because it's gonna, just gonna show that you're difficult to work with. So, follow your agents, respect the producer. So this leads to unwritten rule number seven, respect your veterans. We do a lot of travel by planes, by buses, and we're obviously watching the monitors backstage. And a comfortable seat, desired by all, but sometimes the veteran, someone who has been there and might deserve that seat a little bit more than you can come up. Make sure you're doing the, the, the right thing. Give up that seat, show the respect to the person who has earned it. Because if you don't, trust me, the word will get out that you are disrespectful to the veterans. And I guarantee you that is not the way to get in the good graces of the top brass in the WWE. And this leads to unwritten rule number eight and the rule that ultimately, in my opinion, led to me getting fired. And that is get down to the ring and learn your craft. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but in a WWE show, that ring is set up hours before any of the patrons get to the building. And why is it set up? Because it gives the guys an opportunity to get down to the ring and maybe work on their match for later that night. Maybe work on moves that they've been trying to perfect and aren't quite comfortable enough with doing them during a show. Well, that ring's set up basically so you can work on your craft. To his credit, Johnny Ace, Director of Talent Relations, told me multiple times that it was in my best interest to get down to the ring and work with guys like Fit Finley, who is a wealth of knowledge. And what can I say? I was a, a 25, 26 year old kid that didn't listen to good advice and I thought it was probably a better idea to go off to the gym and get a workout in once I had my match down. Well. Had I went down and worked on my craft, had I went down and constantly tried to get better, had I have learned from guys like Fit Finley, like Stevie Richards, like the Hurricane, like Arn Anderson, like Terry Taylor, all these guys that were down there with an abundance of just knowledge that were trying to give it. I might have been able to stay in the WWE a little longer. I definitely would have became a better worker. That goes without saying. But hey, I was a kid. That's unwritten rule number eight. Be at the ring, getting better at your craft. Now I'm gonna break one of those unwritten rules and actually tell you how much I made as a WWE wrestler. Click right here to find out.